Hi, welcome to Blue Prism Tutorials. My name is Amit. This is part 23, working with Core Stage in Object Studio. In this session, we will learn how to work with Core Stage in Object Studio. Core Stage is available in objects only. It is not available in process. Core Stage is used to carry out complex data manipulations. Core Stage allows Microsoft.NET Code scripts. In Core Stage, code can be written in VB, C Sharp, and J Sharp also. A core stage can have input, output, and code tabs. Let me switch to Blue Prism Virtual Workforce. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create an object. Right click on the object and create an object. I'm just giving the name as data hyphen code stage. And I'm going to click on next. And I'm just without giving any description, and I'm going to finish on that. Now, let me double click on the code stage. If you see over here, by default, it is having initialize, cleanup, and actions that I'm having. If you see on the stage toolbar that you are having code over here, let me drag and drop over here onto, the, onto canvas. Let me double click on the code one. You can see the tabs over here, inputs, outputs, and the code. So whichever the code that you have to write it, you are going to write in this code tab only. If you want to validate that code is valid or not, after writing the code, you're going to check it out at the check code by clicking on the check code. Then you're going to run the code as it is, or else you're going to run your object as it is. Let me write the code. So as I said, for the complex purpose, complex manipulation, data manipulation purpose that we are going to use this code one. But right now, what we are going to do, just a simple sample code that we are going to write it. What is the sample code? I'm just going to add two numbers over here. Okay, but before that, we want to check out one thing. As I said, this will support three kind of languages. One is Visual Basic, and after that C Sharp, and also that it will support Visual J Sharp. So right now, on which basis that I'm going to write it out? How can I know on what basis, on which language that I'm going to write this code? Let me go to initialize and you can see over here. So what is the node that I am having? Correct. Let me go that and let me right click on that one. Let me go to the properties. Over here, you can see the business object properties. So what are the objects that we have created? We can find the properties over here. But what is the reason behind that on the top of that one only that I have given on the description? Let me go. Let me cancel it right off now. If you see over here only, I can find the properties. Correct, but if you're going to click anywhere on the canvas, you don't find the properties. That's the reason this is you know created by admin that you can find it anywhere. So I'm going to click on the properties, and then as of now, you can see the conditions tab, information tab. Okay, who is created all the informations, what are the related informations, and you can see global code and code options. If you see in the code options, you are hanging the DLLs, right? So what are the DLLs it has been right now imported over here? If you see external references, I'm having external references as system.data.dll and system.xml.dll, system.drawing.dll. If you want to add some more DLLs over there, now you can go ahead and you can add the DLLs over here, okay? And just you want to give the name over there and then you can upload the DLLs or import the DLLs. And also you can see the namespaces over here. If you're going to select any DLL that you can find what are the namespaces it will be support. Now, the main point, which long way that is supporting. So right now, if you see the long ways over here, it will support Visual Basic, C Sharp, Visual J Sharp. Whenever you're going to run the code in the code stage, you have to select this option over here. Let me go ahead. As of now, I am fam very familiar with the C Sharp, so that what I'm going to do, I'm going to select long with C Sharp, and then I'm going to click on OK. Now I'm going back to my action, and I am going to write the code in code stage. So I'm just giving the name as add method. I'm just giving the name, so I'm not giving any inputs, any outputs, and uh, I'm going to write the code directly. So I'm going to add int. I'm going to declaring the integers as int a, int b, and I'm going to give it as a value as int c. And after that, I'm going to say a plus b. But there's no values we have assigned, correct? What I want to do over there, I want to give the values over there. A given a as 110 and b equal to 
And now if you see what is the values that I have in int as a in b a equal to 110 I have initialized the values b equal to some 100 values and then I'm going to store the values in int c that is nothing but a plus b correct now let me check the code over here so this this val this code is correct or not how can I go ahead and I'm going to check by clicking on the check code if there is any errors it will be find it out okay fine for the time being what I'm going to do I'm going to give an error over here okay let me remove the semicolon and let me go back to check code and you can see action one code one error what is the validate compile error at line number five expected semicolon over there correct so what I have to do if there is any address also what it will do it will be supporting the you know dot net framework code here what are the framework that we have installed and then it is going to be compiling our code and then it is throwing an error right now if you see I don't have any errors right now because of my code has been written in uh, visual C sharp that is C sharp core right that's the reason it is supporting dot what are the semicolons all the things whereas if you change the long ways over there what will happen it will throw an, uh, an error if you are having semicolon for the time being what I'm going to do I'm going to run this code okay I have checked the code there's no errors and then I'm going to click on okay now what I'm going to do I'm going to linking from start to code one and after that end let me go ahead and let me reset it if there are any errors I found zero errors over here let me execute that you can see it has been executed successfully but how would I know the values the output value is correct or not so let me change a little bit change over here let me double click on that I'm going to take the outputs correct so one disadvantage over here is you can't drag and drop the data items onto the code okay let me go to that one let me add an output okay the output name as I'm going to give it as C okay and what is the type that I'm going to give it as data type as number and I'm going to store the values number in C okay so now I don't want to define over here because of I'm already having an output correct and that's the reason you don't want to uh, you know you don't want to initialize that C value over there let me go ahead and let me check the code is there any output okay this is the cap C that I have given okay let me go ahead let me change the value and let me check the code now you can see that is the case sensitive uh, that the name that we have given over there correct and let me close it so once the code has been uh, executed successfully I have to store the value what are the output that I came in so I have to store the value in C that is in the data items over there correct let me go ahead and let me execute this code once again you can see the value as an output over here let me reset that let me go ahead let me execute that after adding two numbers what is the output I'm having 210 is an output if there is any you know complex data manipulation it is not supported by the object studio there is a possibility by using the code we can write the code by using the code stage correct so in the same way if you want to pass the inputs also you can pass it two values over there I'm just going to give the value as a and the data type as number and also I'm just giving the B and I'm going to take the numbers okay and also if you want to get from the output also you can get the values as of now that I'm going to give 10 comma 20 right and in the code you don't want to initialize all these things C a plus B correct and I'm going to check it out, click on OK let me reset and let me run so again if you see the output is 30 based on the inputs that we are going to give it right now what I want to do if I want to change the long ways okay if I want if I am very familiar with the visual basic or visual J shop I'm going to coding options and I'm going to select the visual basic and then I'm going to click on OK now what are the code that I'm going to write it over here okay in the code it has to support or else you have to write in the format visual basic okay so in that case what I'm going to int a as integer okay I'm just copying over here for the time being okay I'm going to take the values as a equal to 10 so B, over here you don't have semicolons over here in visual uh, basic correct 
So that's the reason I'm not going to do anything. So I'm not giving any semicolon over there. Okay, I'm just going to C is equal to A plus B, and I'm not going to give any uh, you know inputs over here. I'm just going to remove it, and then I'm going to store the values in the C. Okay, let me check it out. Is it working or not? Let me go to the code and let me check the code. If you see, there's the error at the line of C is already declared, so you don't want to declare this one. So remove the dim C as integer. Okay, now check the code. Now it is supporting Visual Basic, correct? So do you find the difference over there when I have written the Visual C Sharp and the Visual Basic, you, you find a lot of differences. I have changed the language properties, correct? So Visual C Sharp to Visual Basic, and then, you know, I have compiled the code by using check code, correct? And now we will see, you know, is it working fine or not? What are the values that are in? Let me go ahead and let me reset it, and let me run once again. Now you can see the same output over here, 10 plus 20, what are the values? Let me change the once again, you know, the values to 200, and let me click on OK, and let me reset it, and let me run once again. Now you can see the output over here, right? In the data item, the value has been stored as 210. So based on the values that we have changed, it is supporting and it is storing the values in data item. So this is all about the code stage. If you have any queries related to the topic, please post them in the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. Have a great day.